Hi, I am Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today's topic is um, quantity among different fundamental concepts of mathematics. Well, everybody, I'm sure everybody knows um, what actually the, the common term quantity is. But in mathematics, it's uh, it's special, as everything else. Uh, quantity is a rather complicated object in, in math, and um, I would like to start from a very philosophical standpoint. Um, if you, let's say, um, consider a set of six buildings and uh, six cows, well, they don't have anything in common, right, except the number six. So, if you have two different sets, probably one of the very, probably the only property which they have in common, or they might have actually in common, is their quantity. Um, okay, so fine, number six in case of six buildings is a property of a set, and number six is a property of another set. Here are the houses and the, uh, the buildings, and here are the cows, and this is the common property. So, what we can actually say that uh, at least finite sets um, might have certain common characteristic. Now, how do we establish that the number of elements in a set of six buildings is exactly the same as the number of elements in a set of six cows or six anything? Well, for this purpose, um, there is a concept which is called in mathematics one-to-one -one correspondence. So let's just spend a little time and explain what one-to-one -one correspondence actually is. If you have certain set of, of elements, and I'm not actually talking about finite set, sets anymore, I'm talking about any set which contains certain elements, and you have another set of elements. And you have the rule which from each element of one set you can always find a corresponding element of another set. And what's very important is that different elements of this, so, uh, of, of, of this set, which we can call the source, if you wish, uh, if they're different, they are corresponding to different elements of another set. So if these are different, then these must be different as well. So this is half of the definition uh, of one-to-one -one correspondence. Another half is just an opposite. If you have all the elements of this set, then for each one you should be able to find the corresponding elements of this one. So this is A, this is B. So we have a correspondence from A to B, which is unique. Different elements should correspond to different elements from the, from the image. And it should be inversible, which means for every element of uh, the set B, you can find the corresponding element of the set A. And again, different elements from B should correspond to different elements of A. So this is a, a, a mutual um, unique correspondence. Unique because if sources are different, the images must be different. And it's mutual because the inverse is supposed to be true as well. Now, if these rules, this correspondence between the elements does exist, then we can say that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, sets A and B. Now, here is a very interesting detail. Uh, it's just one of the uh, a particular case of correspondence, if you wish. Because if you take all the elements from A and map them 
uh, to elements of B, and if we assume that elements of B are completely filled up, which means there is no element in B which is not filled by this particular um, correspondence, then we can always say that inverse um, inver inverse correspondence also exists because for each uh, element of B, since it's an image of something from A, uh, we can always say that the corresponding A element is the source which actually corresponds to this element of B. So in this case, instead of drawing these two different errors, well, actually I can use this, I can use the same but bidirectional error. So every correspondence can be bidirectional. Now, this is a particular case of one-to-one -one correspondence. Um, it's not actually necessary that it will be the case always. And, and here is an example. Um, let's go back to the buildings and cows. So let's say you have a square building a triangular building, and a round building. And uh, cows are called, let's say, A, B, and C. The correspondence between the buildings and the cows can be this. And inverse correspondence can be this. This is our uh, case I, I was just talking about. But at the same time, I don't have to really establish the inverse correspondence exactly in the same way as I established the direct correspondence. I can always say that in reverse, they are this way. So, there is a rule which are uh, errors directed down which um, establish the correspondence between the buildings and uh, the cows, and two different buildings are corresponding to different cows, obviously. Now, the inverse correspondence is also exists from A to triangle, from B to a circle, and from C to, to a square, and, and it's also uh, a unique correspondence because different cows correspond to different buildings. So, depending on how I establish the correspondence, it can, um, it can be of this particular kind, when it's just mutual, or it can be of a different kind. But in any case, uh, it's still one-to-one -one correspondence. So, I would like to actually to be very, very clear that one-to-one -one correspondence is, number one, bidirectional, and number two, it does not have to be bidirectional in this particular way, which means if, if element A corresponds to element B, it's not necessary that B also corresponds to A. It can be something else, like in this particular case. What's important is that both directions should be unique, which means different sources should correspond to different images. Okay. Now, let's talk about um, finite sets. Now, in case of finite sets, there is an obvious statement that only if the number of elements is the same, then we can establish one-to-one -one correspondence. Now, why? Well, obviously, you can consider, let's say you have two different finite sets, one is with three elements and another is with four elements. Now, this direction can be unique without any problems, because you have only three elements and you have four choices, so you can always find a unique image for every source element. But when you go backwards, you have to have a unique um, correspondence between four elements and three images of these elements. And obviously, I, I, I think there is a name actually in this principle. 
it's maybe Archimedes, some, some kind of a mathematician. Um, the principle is that if you have more elements in this, element, in this set than in this, then there is always something left. It's like musical chairs. You have a certain number of people, and the number of chairs is less than the number of people. Somebody will be out of chair. So there is some element in the bigger set which will not be, um, uh, which will not be uh, uh, corresponding to something which was not really touched before by this correspondence. Because you have three elements here, three elements here, but the fourth element will not have any unique, um, unique image. So, if the, if the sets are finite, then the one-to-one -one correspondence is related to the number of elements. Now, um, another very important property of correspondence, uh, of, well, of one-to-one -one correspondence is um, it's transitive. Now, what it means is the following. If A one-to-one -one corresponds to B and B one-to-one -one corresponds to C, then A is in one-to-one -one correspondence with C. Now, how can that be proven? Well, actually, it's quite easy. Let's say you take an element A. Now, using the direct correspondence, you get an element B. Now, from B, you get C. Now, what you can say is that A to C establishes the correspondence from A to C. Now, is it unique? Well, let's just check. If A and B are, if A1 and A2 are different, then B1 and B2 are different because this is a one-to-one one -one correspondence between A and B. Now, since B1 and B2 are different, then C1 and C2 are also different. So, this correspondence for different for different elements from A produces different elements from C1. And reverse is obviously true in exactly the same way. So, one-to-one um, -one correspondence is uh, transitive. That's very important. Now, uh, let's go back to quantity. Um, now, we all kind of um, used to the fact that the word quantity is related to counting. And obviously, with um, finite sets, we have established that the quantity is something which sets can have in common, completely different sets can have in common. And that's the number of elements. That's the quantity, actually, by definition. So, um, if you want to say what's the quantity of uh, elements of certain finite set, well, you have to establish the one-to-one -one correspondence between this finite set of elements and another set, which is one, two, three, up to n natural numbers. So if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between your set and set of the first n natural numbers, then we can say that the quantity of the elements of this set is equal to n. This is the definition, basically. That's it. So the quantity is defined as a correspondence of the elements of our set with a subset of the first uh, n natural numbers. That's what quantity equals n means. And from this, actually, we can say that the quantity of two different sets which have the same element, which means they are mapped to the same, they're one-to-one -one corresponding to the same subset of uh, natural numbers, so if this is quantity n and this is quantity n, and then we can say that the quantity of these two sets is the same. They are equal in their quantities, if you wish. So that's the quantity of the finite set. But this is just the beginning. <laughs> As always, there are much more complex things. And mathematicians always find 
something to, to exercise their brains a little bit further. So where are the complications? Complications are in the infinity. Okay. Now you know what the quantity is, and you probably feel quite comfortable with finite quantities. Let's talk about infinity. Well, the first infinity which we might deal with... Well, first of all, infinity is something which is a completely pure creation of our mind. There is no such thing as infinity in the real life. I mean, yes, there are some physical theories about infinite universe, etc., but this is all kind of theories. You cannot, in a, in, 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 a, uh, in a normal way, in a, in a regular practical way, establish the fact that something is equal to, to, to infinity. So, we are talking about creation of our minds. Infinity is in our minds. So, what's the first set uh, with infinite number of elements which we can deal with. Well, obviously this is a set of all natural numbers, etc. What's important is this infinity, etc. That's what makes it infinite. Okay, let me change the marker. All right. Um, how big is it? Well, it's infinite, right? But we would like to compare um, infinite sets in exactly the same fashion we compared the finite set, which is one-to-one -one correspondence. Well, let's talk about another uh, infinite set. Let's talk about natural numbers, but not all of them, but only, let's say, even ones. So it's 2, 4, 6, etc. This is also infinite number. And it's obviously smaller because this is a subset of this. So we took only every second number. So it should be smaller, right? Well, wrong. <laughs> it's not smaller. First of all, the words smaller or, or larger or bigger or whatever, they are not applicable to infinity. Um, there is no such thing as a smaller infinity. However, there is a way to compare different infinities. Uh, we're just not using the word smaller or bigger infinity. We're using some other words which I will introduce in a little, in a little while. So first of all, let me talk about these two infinity, infinities. Um, my statement is that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between them. And if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between them, we cannot say that one is more infinite than another. They are both equivalent to each other. So there is a, a new word called cardinality. Cardinality. It has nothing to do with church cardinals. So the cardinality is basically an equivalent of the word uh, quantity, but applied to infinite sets. So. My statement is that the cardinality of these is the same, and um, because they are in one-to-one, -one, they can be uh, put into one-to-one -one correspondence. Well, how? Very easily. Now, this direction is y is equal to 2x, where x is element of this and y is element of this. Now, this is basically a correspondence, a unique correspondence from this to this. Why is it unique? Well, because it's defined on every natural number, which is an element of this set, and two different numbers using this function will um, correspond to two different even numbers. So this is the rule, basically, that this correspondence should be number one complete, it's defined everywhere, and unique, so two different uh, elements would correspond to two different images. Now, how about the way back? Well, actually, in this particular case, we can have the way back using this function. So, for an element 2 of this, my corresponding element 
would be 1, for 4 it will be 2, for 6 it will be 3, etc., etc. In this case, by the way, this particular correspondence is double, double error. Because if this element corresponds to this using this uh, transformation corresponding rule of correspondence, then the, the way back is exactly what this particular thing is. So, using these two uh, correspondence rules, we have established one-to-one -one correspondence between these two seemingly different sets. Because this is definitely a subset of this. However, both are infinite, and both infinities are in some way equivalent, which in, in, in more precise terms sounds like the cardinality of this set is exactly the same as the cardinality of this set. Which cardinality means it's a, it's a replacement of the number of elements or quantity, but for, um, for infinities. So, the same cardinality means that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between two sets. But maybe all infinities are of the same cardinality. Maybe I can always uh, find the correspondence between all the different infinities. Is it right? Well, this is definitely wrong. There are more infinite infinities and less infinite infinities, if you wish. And I'll just give a couple of examples. For instance, the number of uh, points in a segment cannot be put into the correspondence, into one-to-one -one correspondence, to a number of natural, to a set of natural numbers. Now, this cardinality of this is definitely greater. Now, why? Well, I can definitely put this correspondence. How? Well, um, there are many different ways. But for instance, I have divided this segment in two halves and called this point corresponding to this. Then I divide this into two halves and I made the correspondence with a number of two etc. So every time I divide by half and I can find from, and for each number I can find a point. So from this set to this I can find the correspondence which is unique and defined everywhere but not the vice versa. Why? It's a different question and it's not easy but that's actually a true statement there is no correspondence, unique correspondence from each point on the segment and, uh, and natural numbers. So, um, the next lecture I will actually talk about different examples, well, primarily infinite examples, of different sets, and I will compare their cardinality. But for now, I think this is enough to basically introduce you to a concept of quantity and cardinality applied to infinite sets just as an introduction to the whole concept. So that's it for this particular lecture, and uh, don't forget that there are problems in the next lecture associated with this one, uh, which are very, very important to understand this whole um, business of uh, quantity and cardinality better. Um, okay, so that's it for today. Uh, Unizor.com is where you can find um, uh, this and many other interesting educational materials. And parents are definitely encouraged to use this side to supervise and control the educational process of their, of their, of their student. Um, okay, thank you very much and good luck.